is Dan York. I'm here at IETF 84 in Vancouver, British Columbia with Warren Kumari, who's the co-chair of the Dane Working Group. So uh, what's Dane all about, Warren? So what Dane is trying to do is provide a way for relying parties to be able to have faith in the certificates that they get. So what does that mean? Um, so when you connect to a SSL secured website or TLS secured website, you get the sort of lock icon in your browser. And what that means is that you've received a certificate and the browser is trusting the certificate. And usually the browser trusts the certificate because it's been signed by a CA. Um, so, so what Dane tries to do is provide a way for site owners to be able to publish additional information so that the relying parties can trust the certificate. So basically I can know that that is the certificate that my bank or whatever yes. else wants me to use. Wants you to use. Um, and it's using DNSSEC, right? Yeah. To... So what it is is you publish the sort of fingerprint of the certificate, the hash of the fingerprint, in the DNS um, in a specific new resource record. And then it is signed with DNSSEC. So you as a relying party, or more specifically your browser, will download the certificate um, and then will calculate the fingerprint, will also do all of the standard um, TLS checks to make sure the certificate is valid. Um, and then it will compare the fingerprint to what's published in the DNS and secure it with DNSSEC. So what this provides is a way for the relying party to know that the certificate that was received is the one that the site operator intended right. the user to receive. Um, now so does this work with anybody's certificate? Yep, this should work with any um, CA signed certificate, so sort of the traditional certificates that people are currently using. It will also allow you to do this with self-signed certificates. So currently, often if you go to a website, you get this sort of red pop-up page that says, you know, we have no way to verify that right. the certificate is the correct one. For the warning, story. warning, warning, run warning, away, run yes. Away. <laughs> um, what you should now be able to do is also check in the DNS. And if you see the fingerprint for it, that, you know that the um, server operator intended you to get that particular certificate. So I could generate my own self-signed certificate for my site and put it up in DNS, yes. and the chain of trust yes. from DNSSEC would then assert that this is the certificate that I wanted up there, yep. so assuming I have control of my domain. Assuming you have control of your domain. Yeah. And there's obviously, if you're a person running your DNS server or your registrar or something like that, they're in this chain, and so they could potentially monkey with your DNS right. records. Um, unfortunately, the way most of the certificates on the internet work now they're what are called DV or domain validated certificates. And the way you get a DV certificate is you generate a public and private key pair and then you email it off to the CA. And the CA does some checking on it, but the primary check is they send you a sort of token via email. And then you prove that you have control of the domain by sort of taking the token and emailing it back to the CA. So an attacker could potentially yes. trick a CA into giving him a bad certificate. Yep, both an attacker could trick the CA into it, but also an attacker that has control of the DNS can point the MX records for the domain somewhere else to servers he controls. He could then apply for a CA DV um, yeah. certificate, and he would be the one who gets the token. He could right. then respond back to the CA, and the CA would give him a legitimate certificate. So what this sort of means is anybody who is in the DNS provisioning or serving pipeline, actually mainly DNS provisioning pipeline, um, can get a DV certificate um, for the domain. All right, so, so Dane, Dane provides a way of ensuring that the domain name holder yes. who's controlling the DNS records can assert that this yes. is the certificate that I yes. want people to use. And because an attacker who has control of the DNS has the ability to get a DV certificate, um, the very fact that we require somebody to show that they have control of the DNS, we think sort of provides a very similar level of assurance to a plain EV signed certificate. Uh -huh. Because there are a number of other certificates um, sort of provided by the CAs, like extended validation, and those have a lot more actual right. access behind them. Those are the ones with sort of the green address bar in your browser. But even those could be further secured through Yeah, those Dan. can be further secured. So. Mm -hmm. If so, you want to use a self science certificate, you can do this through Dane. Or if you're sort of a large site operator, um, you know, a big content provider or something like that, you can simply publish Dane records 
for your existing certificates. So Danes, I mean, it sounds very cool. Where are you at in the process of creating documents and things? So we've published um, our sort of problem statement draft, or pro problem statement document as an RFC that was a couple of months back. The main Dane protocol document is in the very final stages. It's been approved by the IESG, IETF, mm -hmm. and it's currently just called the RFC editor getting sort of the uh, started yeah. and the T's crossed. Um, so that's going to be published in the next few days, weeks. Um, and that explains sort of the lion's share of the Dane stuff. Um, you know, what it is, or how you use it, um, how you generate records, where you publish them, what the different types of Dane selectors are, you know, self-signed or signed by CA. Mm -hmm. um, so that is largely done. What we're now moving on to is what we're calling the How to Do Dane with Foo. So this is going to be a separate sort of series of documents. Um, how do you do Dane with SNTP? How do you do Dane with MUA? So you know, how does your mail right. user agent um, know that it's connecting to the correct? Now that There's also SMIME, um, so you'll potentially soon be able to publish you know, your email address and some certificate in the DNS. Yeah, so now that Dane's defined, you're looking at how do you actually deploy it for various different yes. things. Yeah. We tried to make the base design as generic as possible, but you know, a number of protocols have different um, requirements. Sure, And so sure. these are expansions on that. That's cool. Now, wh where's Dane at in terms of, I mean, obviously it's just being defined and it's being published, but as far as actual usage or deployment, what's the scope of that looking like? Unfortunately, there's not as much deployment as we'd like. Um, but you know there are tools to generate Dane resource records or TLSA, uh, mm -hmm. TLS Association records, and so you can currently generate one and publish it for your site in the DNS. Um, there are a couple of tools that you can sort of run it from the command line to verify that this works, and there are one or two browser extensions uh -huh. for Firefox and I believe for Chrome as well. So the next step really is then to work with the browser vendors, yeah. etc., to get that moved in. Browser vendors have expressed interest in doing this. Mm -hmm. um, and I some of them are working on it, but you know what would be ideal is once all of the browsers actually support this natively. Right. Um, so you know we're working towards that, and hopefully there'll be some progress soon or public progress soon. Cool. So well, now and obviously, of course, in companion with that, you need the companion rollout of DNSSEC and yes. validating resolvers and all yes. that. So it's all an interlinked okay. thing. So, so how we actually think that this hopefully will help with the deployment of DNSSEC. Um, you know, this is one of the things that people keep looking for in the yeah. and one of the sort of yeah. That's why I'm excited about it. And it gives somebody it gives a, a valid use case for what you can the value you can get for DN with yes. DNSSEC is providing this additional layer of security. So I am thrilled yeah. with the work. I mean, there's already a large amount of utility that DNSSEC gives you. Right. Um, this is something that potentially people who don't care about that level of assurance this gives them something that they yeah. can so how does somebody uh, get involved if they want to learn more about uh, Dane or, or participate, contribute a, a, you know, a, a Dane with Foo kind of document? Well, what do they do? The first thing is come and join the mailing list. Um, it used to be a very busy and somewhat unfriendly place. Um, now that we've got the sort of protocol document and the use case document done, it's become a much friendlier place to be. <laughs> so you know, if you had subscribed and unsubscribed, come back. We're, <laughs> we're friendlier now. Um, join the mailing list. Um, read the existing Dane protocol and use case documents so that you understand where we're starting from. Um, and then just, yeah, write some drafts, come show up the meetings, um, come along and play. That'll be fun. Sounds great. Thanks for your time, Warren. Great. Thank you very much.